Hi everyone, um, this is the first set of videos for the new A2 work that we're going to cover. Um, it's all to do with trigonometric functions, but they're slightly different ones, and it's the new ones. Now this pack has only got three lessons in it. It's come from a bigger pack. Uh, the next pack along kind of finishes that off. And you'll notice a slight difference to the boxes on the front. Because we've got consolidation exercises, which we'll do in class and finish, but you need to kind of make sure that you keep on track of it so you know you've done it all, and that's quite important. Right, now then, so we've got these new graphs which you've not seen. We're all kind of happy with, with sine x, looks something like that, and cos x, looks something like that. Tan x looks something like that. But we've got these other ones, these reciprocal graphs, because they're 1 over graphs. So 1 over sine is cosecant, 1 over cos is secant, and 1 over tan is cotangent or cot. But tan, because it because tan is sine over cos, cot is cos over sine. So it's a little bit of a head mess, really, at the start. Right, so it's asking us to work these values out. So you've got to be careful. I'm going to get my, bring my calculator up so I can work them out. Uh, where's it got my calc? Right. Menu one. Right, so let's have a look. So cot 3041, so cotangent or cot is 1 over tan. So this is the same as 1 over tan 304. Now your calculator hasn't got a cot, a sec, or a cosec cube. So I have to think 1 over. So I'm going to put the bracket up, uh, fraction up, and I'm going to have 1 over tan 304. Pexy works. Kinda does. Kinda doesn't. Come on. There. Now that's actually wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because my graph's in radians. So we have to be careful because this question's in degrees. So if I just do my shift menu and change it to degrees. So there's a lot more moving backwards and forwards between degrees and radians. Let's go back up on it. So it now gives me minus 0.675 degrees. So two lots of secant is the same as two lots of one over cos. So I've got two over, probably actually there, I might as well, two over cos of minus 48 degrees. So I've got fraction two over cos minus 48 degrees. So you just have to remember that we've got these extra bits here. And that's 2.99 degrees. Now, cosecant squared, your calculator doesn't really like the sine squared or cos squared bit. So I need to see it as cosecant of 45 degrees, all squared in a bracket. Which means if cosecant is 1 over sine, it's 1 over sine 45 but all that bottom line is squared. So I've got 1 over bracket sine 45, close bracket, all squared. And it gives me a value of 2 there. Right, now then, on to the next line then. So this one's in radians, so I do a quick jump to radians. Ah, oh, stupid thing. Now. So I've got secant of pi by 4. Secant is 1 over cos. So you've just got to remember, I remember, it's just the opposite letter. So S for secant goes to cos. C for cosecant goes to sine. That's the way I remember it. There must be, I'm sure there are far better ways of remembering it. But secant is 1 over cos. So I've got 1 over cos. 
because of pi by 4. Oops. So that gives me root 2. Move these over here. I've got cosecant pi by 2. So that's a 1 over sine of pi by 2. That gives me a value of 1. I want to have a look at this one because it's 1 over tan of pi by 2. So I've got to be careful with tan. So 1 over tan of pi by 2. And the reason I've got to be careful with tan is because of the asymptotes. I've got to think about what's actually happening. So that at the moment tells me it's undefined. If I think of it as being, now tan is sine over cos. So 1 over tan will be cos over sine. So cos of pi over 2 over sine of pi over 2, because tan is sine over cos. Now if I think about that, it moves the pens down a little bit. I'll get that. I know that the cos graph goes like that. And that's where pi over 2 is. So that's 0. Now the sine graph goes like that. And that's where pi over 2 is, which is at 1. So what I've got is 0. I've actually got 0 over 1. But it just didn't like the fact that tan of pi by 2 doesn't work. So what I've actually got is nothing. But you've got to be careful. And the reason being is that this tan of pi over 2 doesn't work. It's undefined. But 1 over tan of pi by 2 does physically work. Right, so it talks about this part here, where it says that angle for sine x is 0, cos x is 0, tan x is 0. It's undefined, so you've got to think about that. That's where the asymptotes are. So it says try sketching it. Right, so we're going, I'm going to graph it, I'll show you, on the calculator, and I want you to, then you can have a go, but you'll see it on the next graph, on the next page. So if I go down to graph, right, so this is cosecant, so 1 over sine. Now if you look, there are asymptotes, and there are min and max values. So if I drew, so that's 1 over sine, isn't it? So if I drew the sine graph, do it here. It's on the next page, so I'm not going to really go about it too much. So there's the sine graph from 0 to 2 pi, going from 1 to minus 1. So that's sine going that bit there. Now, cosecant is 1 over sine, so I've got to think 1 over my y value. So 1 over nothing is undefined, it's infinity. So I've got an asymptote there. So 1 over nothing when it's pi, because that's, I've got a y value of nothing, that would give me an asymptote. And that would give me there an asymptote. Now I'm thinking extremes and I'm going to think about what happens in between. To be fair, your calculator draws it, but it's nice to understand what's going on. Right, so at the top there, for sine of pi by 2, it has a value of 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. For sine of 3 pi over 2, uh, it has a value of minus 1. So 1 over minus 1 is minus 1. Now think about what happens with this curve. As I go from the value of pi over 2, sine pi over 2, down to 0, that number is getting smaller. The height of the red curve is getting smaller. So 1 over it means it's getting bigger. So the graph for cosecant looks like that. And it has asymptotes. This one's the same, but the y value would get smaller going from 3 pi over 2 to either pi or 2 pi, but it's negative. So I get that kind of shape. And that's, whoops, that's a bit wonky, but that's where the shape comes from. And that's on the next page here, which is good because I've pretty much run out of time. There. And it talks through them all. So I'm going to finish there. So I only get 10 minutes to talk about this one. Okay, right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.